Hi, it's Calder from Singing Matters once again. I'm here to talk to you once again about breathing and breath control and breath function. And I'm going to run you through a little exercise today, which um, helps a lot of students out. It's helped me out in the past. And it's just a way of kind of using a sound and a consonant to create a mechanical setup in the voice, which is going to it kind of force you to not force the air out it's going to force you to not overuse the breath and use it wrongly and force you to kind of understand the sensation that you should be looking for and what you should be feeling um when you sing notes and if you've done any amount of vocal training you might have come across this sort of exercise before using the g sound you can't do a breathy g you can't kind of force air through a g it creates this pressure build up it's like a stop. It's a good way of stopping the airflow, making sure the cords are closed. Everything's closed off. So when you then go from a G to a vowel, like a U, H, U, it's the most neutral vowel. So we'll go with that for now. You can do it on anything you like. G, sorry, G, ga, gu, anything you like. Yes, it's traditional baby noises, but who cares? You are here trying to sort your voice out and you will feel weird doing it. Um, but you've got to just keep reminding yourself of forget the sound that you're making, you are trying to create a mechanical setup in the voice and create the muscle memory around that so that you can repeat it. We're trying to make this, the vowel almost feel the same as the G once we've released it to the vowel. So you're not going, you know, letting go or squeezing it where the air's coming out in between. Anything where it lets go, you're trying to notice that. It's like, oh, I'm doing that. Oh, okay, there's an amount of air coming out there. Or or it's squeezed because I'm trying to hold that G that I'm squeezing on it. It's just a way of trying to get the muscle memory to do the right thing, the muscles to do the right thing so you can create muscle memory. And people feel stupid doing it because you're just going, good, 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 good. But just forget about the sound. Stop being so precious, thinking you're some artist. I'm sure you are, but you want to sound good. So you have to forget about the artist and the performer and you have to think about the mechanics and the instrument. And work on these things so that you know what it feels like so you can try and replicate that feeling when you're singing songs with other words and all the rest of it. You can also take this exercise and use it by that sound, the G-U-H or G-A-H, whatever you want, on the melody of a song to practice the breath control. This is a really good way of controlling your breath. It's a great way of understanding the feeling that you're looking for and to start to spot some of the problems. So you get better at noticing that when you're doing it in a song. I will talk no longer and get straight to it. So we're just gonna go on a five note major scale, same as a lot of scales and exercises. And we're just going to get a breath in first. You can hear me already doing it. I'm setting the voice up to sing like I'm just crying a little bit and I'm a little bit upset. Or I'm just holding a heavy weight and I'm just kind of... <sighs> you can hear the strain in my voice, that little bit of strain, like the body's engaged in some form of strenuous activity, lightly strenuous. I'm already sort of there without needing to do the G because that's another way of getting to it is to talk in that manner that I do always describe in my videos and with my students. So, like that, okay? So there's the first two. My voice is often in a bit of state of disrepair. It's not great. I am a vocal coach. I had an operation a few years ago. There's still some effects left over from that, unfortunately, because I went back to gigging way too soon. So if you hear any strange things in my voice, that's probably what it is. That's something I just have to live with. That I sort of navigate when I'm recording or singing live. So we'll start from there. I'm going to try and shut up and just get on with it. Again, just a reminder, nice and quiet. As you get higher, less volume. And as you get higher again, even less volume. A very small sound, 
You learn how to belt and sing powerfully and strong by starting small. You won't want to believe it. Some of you will. Some of you won't be able to believe that yet. But it's so goddamn true, okay? Please try and take that on board. Just go quiet. We're not looking for any major big thing here. We're just trying to work with the mechanics in a very easy, easy, effortless way. Don't let any air out in between the notes and hold at the end. Stop the note and then let the air out. Okay? No more instructions. She's using a bit of fry. Breathe back in again. I'll try not to go too fast. Again, just remember that you're working with the mechanics here. Forget about the stupid sound that you're making. You try to notice any time it squeezes. You try to notice any time you let go too much. Let it go really small and thin. We're going up there now. So light on that top note there on the E on the on the bridge. Again, really small. Couldn't be a smaller sound that I'm making there. Really starting to go up into there now on the top note. Keeping that sound right back there. I'm not putting it out through the nose front. Let that one go a little bit, actually. <laughs> See how small and squeaky that top note is. And then the high C up there. Okay, don't worry if it goes a bit falsetto. Don't worry if it goes a bit flippy into head voice. Just sort of... Let it do its own thing because we're looking for ease and comfort and, and a lack of strain and stuff. So anything that's not strainy, great. And even if it allows, if you go to head voice and you feel like it shouldn't be, try not to worry about that too much perhaps if you're new to this exercise and just go for something that feels a little bit more effortless. And then you can get better at kind of bringing in that little tiny bit of, of chest musculature to just hang on from the front and cling on. There's some ways you can practice that sort of thing actually. In some contexts, it'd be totally fine to sing that note as an as a, as a sort of heady, more falsetto sound. Hey! Sometimes you need some more belt in there, but it's the tiniest, 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 inconceivably tiny bit of your voice, your chest, the muscles, musculature at the front, muscles that you're trying to cling on to, just holding on that little 5%, 1%, 10%, no more than that. And to get a chesty sound in that sort of part of your range, you're only using the tiniest bit of this just holding on to it kind of set up. And, and that surprises people and it's hard for people to get used to at first. But that's just a little extra there for something to think about um, where you're kind of... Ah, nice and light and falsetto. 
and I'm just holding on a tiny little bit and re-engaging my chest voice, but not, uh, you know, where it's going to hurt, okay? So that was mainly just to give you that g exercise. You will not believe how useful this can be if you can really buy into it and understand the point of it that hopefully I've made clear. You're trying to not let any air escape and you're using the G to get you there, to set the voice up in such a way where you're already stopping the airflow so you can tell the difference between too much air escaping and that nice balance in between of holding the breath back in a controlled way without the other end of the spectrum where you're squeezing it and, and getting too tense and involving parts of your body that you shouldn't. Now, when you're going up through an exercise like this or any exercise, anything where you're going from low to high, even in one little phrase or one scale run, if you kind of go, and you can feel it tensing up, try and take your time. And notice where something changes, where the air is coming out, where the direction of where it feels like it's resonating has maybe come more forward or changed or doing something where the air is blowing out of your face is something you're releasing, you're squeezing. Something's not the same in the same controlled way. And you want to try and notice what does your body do at that moment that's different to the other notes? What is grabbing that shouldn't be? What isn't letting go and allowing the voice to work? So if you're trying to hold on to your chest voice too much, you have to try and let go of it. You have to try and ease off a little bit more than you were before as you go higher. So just try and notice those things that are happening. If you feel that grab, try and stop. Open it up into a little bit more of a yawny type. Wide, nice and open throat. Um, go, 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 go. And just play around. Play around with as many different sort of setups as you can whilst just... I'm always doing this. I find myself doing this and I don't even realise I'm doing it. First time I've really picked up on saying that, maybe to a student or in a lesson, but I'm always kind of checking if there's anything tense here. I'm always just feeling for it. It's like, am I tensing up? Is there anything going on there? Can I, can I feel that muscle, these muscles getting involved? They don't need to. If you notice those muscles getting involved under here, it's all attached to the root of the tongue, swallowing muscles, different parts of sort of survival musculature, all the rest of it. If that's grabbing, if you feel this squeeze here, then we need to try and remove that. And this kind of yawny, yawny approach where you're letting the sound as it goes higher go more up there. There's a little channel it wants to go through so it can get into the head. You want to play around with that without letting anything tense at the same time and just get a feel for what the muscles are doing. Just try and open it up a little bit. Try and make it nice and loose and relaxed, but wide and open at the same time in terms of the throat and everything. Okay. Contradictorily, we're going small and thin at the, at the same time. It's going to totally blow your mind, but fortunately... I'm not going to explain that contradiction just now. You're aiming for an ease of feeling and you're aiming for a small, effortless sound where there's no sense of air escaping. So give that a try, the G-U-H. Try it on a different vowel if you feel like it. Try the same principle around the melody of a song, but using that sound. And I'd love to hear in your comments if this helped you at all or whether it helped highlight some stuff that you can now see you need to work on. It's been working for students recently. It's an it's an exercise that coaches use all the time for a very good reason. So give it a try. I will leave you for this week with this video. As always, the very best of luck with your singing. And if you're interested in lessons, I've got very reasonable rates for people online. Very reasonable. Get in touch. Singingmatters.co.uk. And I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers.